human body is not a linear system. It's not a fuel tank. You dip it, doesn't mean it comes back up when you fill the tank. And you treating sleep that way. You abuse your body and you think that now if I rest for a day, I'm back in the zone. No. It doesn't work like that. So I'll tell you this incident wherein uh, once uh, uh, while riding in the night, I just blacked out and yeah. I fell down and sort of had a finger injury. Well, you were, well, you were riding when? Uh, during the night. Okay. So post that, uh, even when I uh, even when I want to, uh, you know, bend on a curve or... You are the guy who was telling me, who was asking me, how do I cut down on my sleep time, right? Are you the same person? No. No. Okay. You sleep I want well. more sleep. Huh? I want more sleep. You want more sleep. <laughs> do you, how many hours do you sleep? Six hours, seven hours sometimes. Six hours is average. Look at this. He talks, he says six hours and his non-verbal is as if that is 10 hours. <gasps> six <laughs> hours. <laughs> six hours is minimum. Right? Especially if you want to learn things fast. Um, mm -hmm. See, learning is, um, to some people, learning is understanding things. And for some people, learning is skill development and for some people learning is about innate mastery what do you what type of learner do you want to be the the innate mastery and innate mastery means that innate mastery comes in when you have new neurocortical pathways that support the automatic behavior of the things that you're learning to do you understand what i mean by that mm -hmm. so let's say you're learning to play the piano at some stage in your life, you'll be able to hit the right keys. At some stage in your learning, you'll be able to hit the right keys with the right pressure. At some stage in your learning, you'll be able to hit the right keys with the right pressure, with the right rhythm and the right movement and the right elegance. At some point in your learning, there is a thin fluid that starts to develop between your brain and your fingers, whose sole purpose is to enable the type of movements that you had been practicing for 1,000 hours. Now, you're physically superiorly engineered at that point to play the keyboard than someone who doesn't have that 1,000 hours of experience. You understand the difference? So the innate mastery, almost without exception, without exception, innate mastery in any learning has a physical component to it. Okay, that's why sometimes you can look at someone and you can say, I think he's learned martial arts or he's a programmer. Like they may not be programming at that time. Without exception, there is a physical component to innate mastery. You know, sometimes you meet a doctor and they give you a doctor vibe even if they're not wearing a doctor suit. There's a something about that person Right? There's this physical aspect to learning. And learning requires high, high, high energy. Because when your body is creating these physical neurocortical pathways, and see the myth was that people believe that the brain development happens only till the age of eight. It's broken now. People have realized that even an 80-year-old lady can have new neurocortical pathways that are being formed. And you know what facilitates that? Less stress, good sleep, and new skill development. So one of the reasons I push people to learn new things is because it develops and expands their brain. Now the brain becomes sharper, better, and I, according to Dr. Amen, it also physically becomes more able now, once a brain is more able, it's not only for that skill, that more able brain is also more able for other, other things. So every skill has a physical component to it. And the physical component might be very surprising. For example, a singer has way, way more space to hold air in their body, in their back, in their stomach, than a non-singer would. Physically, they are different. And from their training, they physically metamorphosize. They, they transform, right? There are neurocortical pathways, but there are also other forms of physical changes that happens when you learn new things. 
When does the body work on the fifth body? Sleep. When does the body? When does the brain work on the body? Pardon me? Actually the whole day, but accelerated when you sleep. sleep. There's a reason why babies sleep for extensive hours, right? I have a feeling you fight with your sleep. I have it on my list. <laughs> you have? Yeah. Didn't, isn't that the first thing I asked him? <laughs> <laughs> So your accident was because of that. Okay. Yeah. What did you think it was about? So uh, generally I do not go on night rides and things like that, but post the first up, I was trying a lot of things. So I wanted to feel what it feels like riding in the night. So I'd gone out. Uh, um, uh, the first ride was, was done. I completed it very nicely. After a month, I went again. So I just when, hit a blind when, spot. When you went again, yeah. were you well rested? Yeah, decent enough. Okay. So wait, yeah, wait, I was. Wait, wait. What is decent enough to you? Is oh, okay. No, I think that day I had office, so I left a bit early from office, and oh, that is how I. You need a help with accuracy too. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I I left early from office that day. Mm. Yes. Okay, I get your point now. <laughs> yeah. And especially if you're not habituated to a right ride, please do it when you slept well the previous yeah. day and the next day and then do it the day after. See, a lot of times people have this misconception that, you know, they treat the human body like a fuel tank. You know what's a fuel tank? A fuel tank is a linear system. Yeah. It goes empty, no problem. You pour fuel and now you have full tank. Human body is not a linear system. You abuse it, abuse it, abuse it, and then you say, now I will rest. Doesn't mean it'll come back to its full form. And you abuse it, it takes a longer time to come back to its full form. So it's about becoming aware of thresholds, right? You go to a particular threshold, you rest, you come back there. You go to a threshold below that. One day rest is not enough. You may have to rest longer. You go a threshold much below that, then you may have to physically start doing other activities to just get back to where you were. Like think about somebody who has cholesterol, right? They eat, 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 and they eat junk or they don't eat. And then what happens? Chemical imbalance. Now they start eating, it's not gonna help. There is chemical imbalance. And then they continue that routine, what happens? The imbalance produces other imbalances and then they start having other things and maybe they start having cholesterol and now they start eating, what happens? Their body is not capable of, di of digesting and sending away that extra thing. It goes and accumulates all that fat in the fatty liver. Then what happens? Now, even if they get to an ideal lifestyle, food on right time, workout, their body has half the capacity to metabolize because their organ is now physically altered. Human body is not a linear system. It's not a fuel tank. You dip it, doesn't mean it comes back up when you fill the tank. And you treating sleep that way. You abuse your body and you think that now if I rest for a day, I'm back in the zone. No, it doesn't work like that. So you gotta, you gotta take care of that. So sometimes, so your standards of what is okay has to change. You have to start calibrating. And, and also remember, if you're not in a high performance state, how are you gonna do good sales? Cal calibration, you know there's a, we tell people don't have alcohol when you're at up, because a 24 hour program. We also tell them don't have alcohol two days before. Because being sober is your reference of normal. But my reference of normal is something slightly different. And it takes a minimum of two days for the alcohol to wash out of the body.